Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here, welcoming you to another in our long line of deep dives into the backstory of some of the most notorious characters from fighting game history. We've already looked at some of those greedy buggers that simply can't be satisfied with appearing in only just one franchise, and think nothing of hopping the fence into nearby neighbouring games causing all sorts of mischief. Today we are going to continue the trend as we dust off our oversized leotards to take an extensive look at the origin and history of the not so gentle giant German Oath who is featured in both Street Fighter and Final Fight games. This ladies and gentlemen is the story of Hugo, yeah. To begin this tale we need to head back to the 1980s. Hugo made his very first appearance all the way back in 1989, in the Capcom arcade classic that influenced almost every single side-scrolling brawler that followed it, Final Fight, which was released on the much lauded original CP system hardware, to massive critical and commercial acclaim. At this point in time however Hugo, or at least a character that looked like Hugo, was little more than a non-playable enemy sprite that would pop up frequently throughout the game. This character would appear in a variety of different coloured palette swaps and would be known as Andor, with future lore suggesting they are a family of wrestling giants, with Hugo later being revealed to be part of this family. Andor was initially designed as a hulking brute that acted as a rather terrifying thug in the crime infested Metro City possibly with the idea of continuing the pro wrestling theme that was rife in the game, partially due to main man Mike Hager being an ex-pro wrestler himself and supposedly somewhat inspired by former governor and original heel commentator Jesse the Body Ventura. With this in mind, an Andre the Giant inspired heel character was created to complement the classic babyface Hagar, towering over the other playable characters and most of the NPCs to mimic Andre the Giant's massive height. Given how much journalistic integrity we like to maintain on this channel, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that although the former WWF superstar was obviously extremely tall, his height has also been massively exaggerated over the years to maintain his legendary aura. Although Andre was always billed and listed as 7 foot 4, it is believed the enormous Frenchman was somewhere between 6 foot 8 and 6 feet 11, depending on the source. But anyway, as for Andor, he was billed as being from Germany, which is also seen as a reference to Andre. Apparently France and Germany are considered entirely interchangeable nations by the well-travelled folks at Capcom Japan I guess, ooh la la. Andor was given a leotard similar to Andre's but with a leopard skin print and the rest of his attire altered to match the strangely Vivian Westwood inspired punky look sported by the fashion loving Mad Gear gang. Andor may have been almost 8 feet tall but he was still so insecure that he had to try and fit in with the cool kids. To do so he wears dark combat boots, brightly coloured jeans, studded wristbands and a thick chain wrapped around the back of his waist to the front of his hip. The main colour of Andor's singlet would change depending on where you were in the game or which version of him you were fighting. The similarities with the 8th wonder of the world would continue further as both he and Andor share the 19th of May as their birthday. However, it is also believed that some of the inspiration for the initial design of Andor came from former Mr. Universe and original Incredible Hulk actor Lou Ferrigno due to similar mannerisms and a resemblance in the hair and face. If this is true, it's pretty ironic to think that the Mad Gear member was inspired by both Andre the Giant and Hulk, given just how synonymous both of those two names have been with each other throughout wrestling history, brother. As Andor is a frequently appearing character in Final Fight, it makes his canon history a bit messy and confusing. He's essentially a palette swap in the game reappearing after being killed, occasionally going by the name of Andor Jr and even doubling up at one point as both F Andor and G Andor in a boss fight. It was initially thought that the Hugo character from Street Fighter was merely a strong lookalike, but it was subsequently confirmed that Hugo Andor is his full name and they are indeed one of the same. So I guess a huge family of Andors must have moved over to Metro City from Germany, with Hugo being the only one that survived Mike, Cody and Guy's brutal assault on Mad Gear. Why not eh? This is at least partially accurate, as it was Andor's ultimate defeat at the hands of the mustachioed Hagger in the original Final Fight that led Hugo to swear revenge on the cigar smoking git and prove that he is the best pro wrestler in the world, 
and was the inspiration for him to sign up to the World Warrior Tournament. It would be a while before such aspirations came to fruition however, as he was back for more punishment in 1993's Final Fight 2 and 1995's Final Fight 3, both released a Nintendo 16-bit juggernaut for Super Nintendo. This was basically more of the same as the giant, or giants, gets taken down by Hagger and his cronies in both games as they topple the criminal underbelly of Metro City. The German Monster's first Street Fighter appearance would be in 1996's Street Fighter Alpha 2, where he can clearly be seen standing triumphantly, sporting his most garish pink leotard in the back of Guy's stage, which is presumably in Metro City. One year later, Hugo would finally make his playable debut, which would come in the form of 1997's second Street Fighter 3 iteration, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, running on the CPS3's hardware, released worldwide to arcades that year and to the Dreamcast a couple of years later. Here we would see Hugo form a memorable and long-lasting partnership with fellow former Mad Gear member and Metro City resident Poison, who is also the subject of a deep dive video on this very channel. In fact, why not check that video out after you've finished with this one? Hugo was originally intended to be in the first Street Fighter 3 new generation, as is evidenced by the prototype version of him hidden deep within the game's data, and the fact that his stage is present. But supposedly, several details of the character and his animations couldn't be finished in time, so he was left out until Second Impact. Poison serves as a kind of valet of sorts, introducing Hugo at the start of each round and celebrating with him in his victory screens. The story goes that the Bavarian Brute was looking to form a new tag team after his original partner had abandoned him for a rival. The Street Fighter tournament served as the perfect opportunity to not only prove his worth after getting his ass handed to him in three consecutive Final Fight games, but also potentially find a new tag team partner players after the dissolution of Mad Gear, he and Poison stayed close pals and she decided to join him on his quest, offering moral support, but also seeing the big lad as a potential cash cow if he could be successful. Hugo was by far the largest controllable character in any Street Fighter game up until this point. His enormous sprite looked extremely impressive, with incredibly fluid animation. Not unlike Hulk from Capcom's Marvel fighting and crossover fighting game series, the character's impressive on-screen size really made his movements and frames of animation stand out, and were quite the sight to behold at the time. Given that the Hugo character had been expanded from that of a lowly thug to a selectable protagonist, it stands to reason that his fighting style and moveset would have to be fleshed out too, and it only made sense that he be given an arsenal of recognisable pro wrestling style manoeuvres such as body slams, lariats and a big splash. There's always a bit of a trade off when it comes to massive buggers like Hugo. His immensely powerful attacks can drain an opponent's life bar quicker than you can say, hands off my frankfurter. But his rather sluggish move execution and incredibly short jump in range can often leave him at the mercy of a quicker character in the hands of a skillful player, or a well-timed projectile heavy attack. Either way, Hugo is one of the most enjoyable characters to pick, and he provided some extra variation in the already extremely eclectic cast of Street Fighter... Uh, fighters. Our gargantuan pal's next appearance would be a blink and you missed it one, as he is seen in a partially obscured billboard advertising an upcoming wrestling match between he and an unnamed opponent in the background of Cody's stage in 1998's Fantastic Street Fighter Alpha 3. He could also be seen chilling out, maxing and relaxing all cool with Poison and fellow Final Fight fence hopper El Gado stood in front of a Mega Man billboard in Guy's stage in that same game. It wouldn't be until the next Street Fighter 3 iteration however, 1999's incredibly fondly remembered Third Strike, that we would get another opportunity to take control of the lovable lump. This time he and Poison are back at the heads of their own promotion, the huge wrestling army or HWA as they were known looking to recruit World Warrior participants to their roster, and also looking to finally get the rather indecisive Hugo to actually commit to a tag team partner. After the Man Beast takes out the thong-wearing deviant Gil in the final, we learn that Hugo was very impressed with the blue and red painted boss's performance, and elects to choose him as his new partner, 
Hugo's completion screen shows him lift an entire ring from the ground, as we see that he and Poison have invaded and taken over another wrestling company. And by all accounts, they've done a much better job of it than WCW did in 2001. But who wouldn't? Their impressive new roster is now on display too, and we even see Ryu and Ken sporting matching flashy pink HWA shirts, signalling that they too have joined the Upstart promotion. Let's hope they get a decent push and aren't just relegated to NXT, eh? Fans of giant Frenchman-inspired, leopard-print-clad German pro wrestlers didn't have long to wait for another playable appearance of Hugo, as he was back just a couple of months later in Capcom's 3D arcade disaster, Final Fight Revenge. Reverting back to his original Andor moniker, and now with an effective long-range chain attack, our guy's polygonal debut was a bit of a stinker. As has already been discussed elsewhere on this channel, Hugo went some way to make up for this poor showing when he next showed up in 2003's arcade crossover hit, SNK vs Capcom SVC Chaos, which was the third game in that particular crossover series, and the first to be developed by SNK. Although criticised at the time for poor presentation and low-res graphics, the big man looks great in his SNK-drawn form, and is one of the highlights of a slightly disappointing title. His tremendous size seems to have been exaggerated even further here, and he is more than double the height of a lot of his competitors. Next up for Hugo would be a return to crossover fighting, as he made an appearance in the often overlooked and seldom talked about Street Fighter Cross Tekken from 2012. To be honest, I'm not sure if the phrase seldom talked about even applies here anymore, as this game has come up so many times on this channel, I seem to be on a one-man crusade to take it out of hidden gem status. Hugo's story shows us that Poison was now not only his manager, but also his tag partner, with the pair teaming up to try and get the HWA onto the global stage and become world famous. The following year would see an announcement for Ultra Street Fighter 4, which would eventually hit arcades and store shelves in 2014, and also mark the Man Monster's return to the Street Fighter franchise. In this chronological prequel to the Street Fighter 3 games, this time Hugo has made a rather sharp career turn and is now working as a construction worker. After a group of former Mad Gear thugs attempt to start a fight with the huge oath, we see his softer side come out, as we learn all about a trait that he and Marge Simpson have in common, his bizarre love of potatoes, which he apparently sees as some sort of metaphor for life. After battering the entire Mad Gear gang for their perceived potato insulting, he decides to join the Sin Tournament to remind everyone just who the big potato round here really is. Hugo's story concludes with him reuniting and forming a new, more equal partnership with Poison, after they bond over, yes, you guessed it, potatoes. As ridiculous as it sounds, this is genuinely one of the funniest and most entertaining stories in all of Street Fighter lore. This narrative would continue into the next game, but unfortunately we would not see no playable version of Hugo, or Andor, or any of his extended family in any version of Street Fighter V, or any of the downloadable fighter packs. The only reference to him at all would come in Poison Story, although he does eventually show up in person at the conclusion. It seems there was a fairly big falling out between the two former Mad Gear gang members in the intervening years between Street Fighter 4 and 5, with the pair going their separate ways. Judging by how frequently Poison brings Hugo up in conversation, however, it's fairly clear to see there is still a connection between the two. When the big lummox finally does show up, the feisty Poison is all too happy to give our focus of the video a second chance at searching for fame and fortune together. All well's the end well then, I guess, and it's chronologically onto Street Fighter 3 in the story's canon. In addition to his video game appearances, Hugo, or quite possibly a member of the extended Andor family, appears briefly in the 1995 animated Street Fighter TV series. He also showed up in the Street Fighter 3 Ryu final series of comics, where we see him take on Ryu himself in an exciting 3 minute double knockout, and also comes out on the losing side in a bout with the devious Muay Master Sagat. In addition, Hugo has made appearances in the popular Udon comics, which he lost out to the red pyjama wearing Lothario Ken Masters in the second World Warrior Tournament. Unfortunately, that about does it for our Hugo retrospective. It would have been nice to see him in a few more games, but that's all we have at this juncture. 
I for one think he would make a fine addition to the roster of the upcoming Street Fighter 6, but at the time of making this video, it's impossible to know whether that's even a possibility. And with his omission from the playable roster of Street Fighter 5, it really is anybody's guess at this point. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of Hugo. If you enjoyed this video, I would be highly keen to know which characters that you would like to see me feature on here next. Maybe it's Skullamania's time to shine. Let me know down below. Videos like this are in part made possible due to my Patreon backers, so special thank yous go out to... A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paula Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey Omar Senior, Ron Dinched, Evan Border, Dilip Manth, Azar Arkai, Drockin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pingit, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Cap Converse SNK, Homes Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Michael Hall, Sang He, Norma Stitz, Langston Miller Noob, Sarah Powell, Flaming Renee, Marvin Liga, TOG Driver, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow. Chris Fisk, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs my show on Patreon. It is hugely appreciated. Yeah. Cheerio.